Welcome back everyone to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill and I'm delighted today to be able to speak to CEO Bram Gordon of Ixico, a leading AI powered medical imaging analysis firm helping uh, big pharma develop new treatments for neurosciences diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and Huntington's. So welcome Bram. Thanks Paul, great to be here. Yeah, well, big congrats on the recent £4 million placing at 9.5p, plus the improved trading momentum. But before we sort of dig into the details, I know you only joined sort of four months ago, so I don't suppose you could just give us a, a quick view, your first impressions of the company. Yeah, it's actually only three months ago. Oh, think, sorry. <laughs> but it does feel definitely like four months. So August, I joined. Um, yeah, the, the reason why I joined, just my quick background is I started my career in, in CNS, so in, in the pharma industry and in, in neurology. I then went into precision medicine, which is much more what Ixico is doing. But I did that in oncology, which I think we can all agree was somewhat more fertile ground, I would say, for the past sort of 15 years. And so for me to now actually bring that together and have precision medicine with the platform that Ixico has in CNS, that was for me a great driver. And, and what I found was exactly what I was hoping for, a very high performing, um, very competent team, but also a platform that obviously already lives more than 15 years. So we've completely revamped it. And that is actually the start now also of the next chapter. And then what's your sort of your first impressions then of the, of the sort of last three months? I mean, obviously you've only, you've only been sort of like, well, you've been traveling around. I know you come back from Madrid and stuff, but uh, the sort of the credibility of the firm in the uh, the neurosciences space, the sort of track record and the sort of the, you know, the, the, the USPs of the business. Yeah, I mean, obviously I knew Ixico already. And I think those that are active in that field, which we are all know Ixico because it has that excellent reputation, actually. So it ex its reputation definitely sort of preceded it. But of course, now being on board, I've heard it firsthand from customers. I've heard it firsthand from investors. I'm sure we'll talk about that yeah. as well. So there has been really sort of that signal. And then indeed, last week I was at CTAT, which is basically the most important Alzheimer's disease conference on a yearly basis in Madrid. And, and again, I sort of really got that confirmation that, um, that Ixico and its platform and its team especially are, are seen as, uh, as top notch, basically. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, what's the sort of the um, the sort of the key secret source behind the company? I, I know it's a sort of the the brains behind the sort of brain scans, but what does that actually sort of mean in terms of your sort of like you know, your key USPs, the key things in the business? So I think the strength of Ixico is that from the start they focused on something very specific, which is neurology and analyzing, as you say, brains behind the brain. So analyzing imaging coming from brain scans, be that MRI, SPECT, PET scans. Um, and that's specifically neurodegenerative diseases, so Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS. And uh, Ixico also really had the, I would say, the luck or the, the vision of going very specific also in Huntington's disease. And that has really been the stronghold of the company of the past years as well. The USP is a combination of its current platform, which we call XCKI, which is based on TTNX, Trial Tracker NX. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's basically an AI driven platform which, as I mentioned at the beginning, has been completely revamped as well, that really allows these pharma companies to do the analyses in their clinical trials, be that in Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, for example, and based on the analysis of imaging, make, at the end of the day, actually very important financial decisions regarding the molecules, the drugs they're trying to get through regulatory approval. And so we basically help them with biomarker endpoint analyses that will inform them whether these products actually go further through the cycle of the development. Yeah, and I guess it's sort of done in sort of crazy precision and accuracy, isn't it? So when you get a sort of like a um, a longitudinal um, scan or scans of, of an individual to see how they're actually uh, behaving or how the actual drug is behaving in that particular person. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously, when we say imaging, that field in itself has already evolved a lot. When you look at an MRI scan today, it's not what we what we saw in the past. And I think humans, as in radiologists, experts have done always a great job at analyzing that. But what we have augmented with the platform is basically making sure that it's much more standardized, that it's much more faster. And then indeed you get that accuracy, as you mentioned, because at the end of the day, the accuracy isn't there. Then obviously there is no use in, in using a platform to, to replace a human. So when we say AI driven, it's really about speed. It's about accuracy and it's about making sure that these things can happen at scale. 
Yeah. And how big is the market? I mean, it does feel as though the whole neuroscience, particularly Alzheimer's, dementia and, you know, Parkinson's, et cetera, they're the sort of the last area that hasn't really been developed by big pharma yet. We've had a number of drugs. We've had a couple of just recently done, but it still is a huge, great opportunity. I mean, unfortunately, there's literally tens of millions of people who die, as we all know, of dementia every single year. But but how how do you see sort of the development now, given the recent breakthroughs? Right. I mean, CNS, central nervous system, neurology, also psychiatry, it is the biggest healthcare um, domain already in the industry today. And it's definitely the biggest challenge for our society as well. But you're absolutely right that I think over the past years, what we've seen is that it became a bit of a desert because some of these molecules, some of these development programs, particularly in dementia, in Alzheimer's, didn't make it to the end point and, and basically didn't get approved. And so it's been a long way to actually see some approvals. And now, of course, We've seen Lily's recent approval. We've seen Azai's Biogen's recent approval. And that really, I think, has sparked a lot of the other pharma companies as well to augment their um, efforts now. And so that's what we're um, witnessing today, I would say, since sort of two, three years. And that's also where you suddenly see, of course, a lot of investment now going into the field. Mm. I personally do think, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm coming from the oncology space as well that CNS is again going to become the next frontier and precision medicine specifically is now really going to make its way into that area. Yeah. And, and I did see the last trading update, your order book has increased quite significantly, actually, from your first half into the sort of the, towards the end of the year, the end of August anyway. How are you seeing that sort of pipeline develop, you know, develop in, particularly in terms of so you've, got, you've got this large sort of biopharma you've got Roche who are just going to enter or soon to enter right. big phase three you've got Bristol Myers also putting in phase three trials next year how are you seeing that opportunity set sort of like uh, you know developing yeah I think Ixico even before I joined right credit to who deserves the credit there so definitely the team so far has actually really already managed to do some turnaround there with the order book. And that's thanks to that diversification of our portfolio. I mentioned at the beginning, Ixico is an absolute leader. We're dominant in Huntington's disease, in rare neurodegenerative diseases, but we've really now also started to make our way into especially Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And so that's what you start to see in our order book. And to your point, obviously we wanna to continue to increase that because as mentioned, I came back from CTAT and at CTAT alone, it was made very clear that in 2025, probably 23 new Alzheimer's disease programs are going to come live from big pharma and from biotech. And so it's clear that we want to have our fair or unfair share of that market. OK, good. And, and in terms of sort of like converting that pipeline, how, how are you going to win those sort of you know contracts? I know you've got the sort of the broker is saying you're going to do sort of like five and a half, five point six million turnover. That was for the last historical year, and then I think it's six for in the bag for for this year, etc. But how are you sort of like then going to convert the pipeline into firm orders? And how do you see that sort of like you know you, you given you've just concluded the fundraise? How what's your sort of your your objectives going forward? Yeah, the objectives for the fundraise were very clear, and they're at the end of the day what makes sense for the business, right? And I sort of use three key terms. Innovate, lead, scale. And innovate means about, it's all about making sure that our platform actually does have these algorithms and those algorithms don't just sort of come alive overnight. That does require resources, investment, and then of course also data sets on platform. So making sure that our platform is equipped to make that difference, especially in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Lead is about making sure that we actually are part of the conversation and that we have our people working with thought leaders, with key opinion leaders globally to be part of that conversation, to make sure that there's visibility of how we've equipped our platform and then scale. The third one is really about making sure that we're as close as possible to these decision makers. And I'm, it's not a secret that of course, half of those decision makers, those programs are happening also in North America. So that is about expanding our footprint and making sure that we've got that global footprint. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, uh, in, in terms of sort of like, uh... You know, it, 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 your sort of M&A, is there any M&A opportunities or is it really just an all sort of like organic growth strategy? No, I mean, at the moment I did a fundraise for organic growth and I mm. think we can actually make rapid growth. And you mentioned a few numbers. I think what you can keep in mind is that we will have double digit growth going in 2025 for our revenue. And, and that is a trend change, yeah. if you look, of course, at the numbers for the company. And that can be done organically with those three drivers that I just mentioned mm. and making sure that the platform plays that role, especially in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. 
but there are very obvious synergies for the platform also in the midterm. As I mentioned, we are a company that operates as a CRO, a clinical research organization, but we are very much fueled by that platform. And I think that platform and the data which we have on that platform, yeah. those are things that we can start to partner with other players as well. And the data sort of mining opportunities, that the sort of the, the 250,000 image sort of reposit, image repository you've got, that's how you could maybe use that in other areas. We can. I mean, obviously, those images are um, we 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 don't own those images. We have those images, but obviously, these images are our sponsors' images, yeah. and at the end of the day, they're even patients' images. So, obviously, as a platform and as a company, we operate in a way that we absolutely respect that. But the images and the quantity of images does inform our algorithms, does inform what can be done, and then at the same time, for example, in Huntington's disease, we started what we call a subscription services together with um, with a consortium called HDIH. And there you see new revenue streams indeed coming based on the data sets which we have gathered. And the ambition is to do the same in these other disease areas. Yeah. And then just on those other uh, revenue streams, in terms of sort of like, uh, you know, the, the drugs which have been currently approved for Biogen and for Lilly, unfortunately, there's, there are side effects of it and they have to have be sort of monitored going forward. Is that also an area rather than just the sort of the, the clinical trials you could actually get into the sort of like the, the post-marketing surveillance? Yeah, I mean, obviously, drugs always come with some side effects and they need to be managed and they need to be they need to be monitored, of course, in for safety of patients. I think in addition to that, there's just a general access question. We've seen, for example, in the UK that some of these drugs have been approved by regulatory bodies, but they've not been approved for reimbursement. And of course, that's an issue for these drug manufacturers as well. And I think those are two areas where we definitely can play a role because basically because we're in this precision medicine and this biomarker area, we can actually equip a company that has gone through its development cycle and that has that, that approval now to select the right patients for reimbursement at the one hand and to also make sure that indeed post-marketing surveillance as we call it is being guaranteed what's going yeah. to be important for Ixico to do that is of course to make sure that we become partners of these companies early on and that we really follow them through that life cycle of development all the way to go to market okay so if you've got all the sort of the parts you've got your sort of your, your ai algorithms and your biomarkers you've got your sort of experts your industry experts your key opinion leaders you've got your your ai platform you've got your platform which is your trial tracker plus you've got sort of the repository of three two hundred and fifty thousand images and also sort of like you know a, a network of uh, imaging centers around the world just over a thousand you collect so you've got all those parts just in the, the longer term sort of in five years where aspirationally <laughs> would you like the business to go to given that it's a sort of like you know just under a six million market you know a re revenue stream at the moment yeah I mean, definitely the next coming two to three years, that needs to go to double digit as well, right? Yeah. So achieving 10 million as a top line should totally be achievable in the next coming years. Um, I should say that if we get to that 8 million top line, that will be sort of a magical one because that also will get us back to profitability. And then you will see that our gross margins uh, at scale when we get to such a number are actually also going to be uh, much more interesting. But I definitely do think that in five years' time, and that is actually also what we've communicated to investors, this can be a 20 million pounds company uh, in terms of yeah. turnover and in terms of top line. That will require some of these things that you and I just discussed in terms of partnering, in terms of looking at some new revenue streams. But the good news is that the platform has been equipped to do that now. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's a great place to uh, to end it. And just on sort of news flow, I'm guessing you've probably got your uh, prelims sometime in December, have you? Probably at about um, you know six, five or six weeks' time. Right. Brilliant. Well, look forward to again then in touching base uh, in, in December. So thanks for your time there, Brad. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me.